All right, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, our great Almighty God, we come to thee in the holy precious, almighty, everlasting name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we praise thee. We adore thee, O Lord. We bless thee. We worship thee for this time. Father, as we go into thy word, speak to us today. Minister unto us. Speak to us through thy Holy Spirit. And Father, thy almighty name be exalted. Father, we praise thee, Lord. We bless thee. We worship thee. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We will read today Revelation chapter 21, verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. As we have seen that we are going through this circumstances and we saw previously that Lord Jesus Christ he overcame the storms he overcame all kinds of situations Lord Jesus Christ he met John on the Isle of Patmos and John was looking toward the situation circumstances and Lord Jesus Christ spoke to him from the back John look at this way don't look at the circumstances don't look what you are going through I am alive I was dead, I am alive, and I will live forever. That's the Lord we have. And he is conqueror, and he has made you conqueror. Whosoever believeth in Lord Jesus Christ, he is conqueror because he lives in you. So we are living by faith and it is the faith who makes you conqueror. First John chapter 5 and verse 4 he says, Whosoever is born of God, he overcome the world and that is his faith. And as much faith you will have, you will be conqueror and you will overcome all these circumstances. Yes, we are all going through all this, but our Lord, He has conquered and everything is in His control. So we are to trust Him and you can be assured that my Lord is with me. Nothing can hurt you. And this is what we have to see. Lord Jesus Christ in Revelation, he was giving them the seven conditions how you can be conquered. And the first condition he gave and that was in chapter 2 and verse 9 and 10. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jew and are not but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear not of these. I'm sorry. Chapter 2 and verse 
four. First we take that one. Nevertheless I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Lord Jesus Christ is talking to Ephesian church. Ephesian church was very zealous for the Lord. They could not accept any wrong teaching and they were very like, uh, you know, they would not uh, come and join anybody but they wanted to live for the Lord, but the first love was gone. They were not loving each other as the Lord wanted them to. And Lord said, this is what you have to do. Doesn't matter what you go through. Doesn't matter how bad situation is. You have to love other people. And Lord Jesus Christ's teaching was that love your enemy. And Lord Jesus Christ, he taught them, no matter how people treat you, Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 through 14, no matter how people come against you, you have to love them. And that's what Lord Jesus Christ is showing. The first love. First is, the condition is to love other people. First John chapter 3 verse 16. It is interesting that John 3 16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. In 1 John 3.16 says, We are born of God. And he said, He gave his life for us and we are to give our life to our brothers and sisters. And we are to do what Lord Jesus Christ taught us to do. So he says, we are to forgive each other. Peter came one time and Peter said, how many times I should forgive my brother? Seven times? Lord Jesus Christ said, no, seven ta seventy times seven. That means 490 times you have to forgive your brother. No matter what he does, but Lord Jesus Christ, he gave you this job. And he says, then he says, if you don't do it, I will take your light out. Because John saw Lord Jesus Christ walking in the lamps, in the midst of the lamps. And he says, if you don't do it, Ephesians, then I will take your lamp out. That means you will not have your light. That means Lord Jesus Christ cannot use you if you don't love your brothers and sisters. Even they bring all kinds of accusation against you. Love them, forgive them, and pray for them. The second reason, second condition Lord Jesus Christ Gave Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. Fear not of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison 
that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation ten days but thou faith but be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee crown of life Lord Jesus Christ he says suffer joyfully knowing this that I am going through this for Lord Jesus Christ he is my Lord and that will bring you joy and he says be not afraid of these things you remember the time Lord Jesus Christ he was in the boat he was sleeping and the disciples they came and they said Lord we are going to die he said fear not where is your faith he got up and he stopped the storm Lord Jesus Christ is with you be not fearful from all these circumstances what is going around First Peter chapter 4 verse 12 through 14 and he says doesn't matter what comes consider honor to suffer for Lord Jesus Christ he wants to show what God has and how almighty God we have yesterday one radio station they were saying because of this whole situation they have seen 54% people more reading the Bible how God works 54% more people are reading the Bible they go to what God is doing and as Lord Jesus Christ he said fear not be joyful and as much we will suffer for Lord Jesus Christ the day he come we will rejoice and we will have more joy and we will be what second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12 he says when you are persecuted be joyful because there is a great reward in heaven Matthew 5 11 and 12 joyful be joyful when you are suffering and that's what our attitude is to be doesn't matter what you see around us Lord has given you peace in your heart and be joyful and be strong and fear not that is his promise fear not I am with you up to the end of the world the third condition he has given us and he said live life of complete separation do not just compromise with worldly things chapter 2 and verse 12 and 13 and the angel of the church in Pergamos write these things say to which he had the sharp sword with the two edges I know thy words and where thou dwellest even where Satan's seat is and thou hold fast my name and has not denied my faith even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr 
who was slain among you, where Satan dwelt. He says, you've been faithful to me, but he says, do not compromise with the ritual and traditions from the world. Don't bring them into the church. And he says, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, he says, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. 1 John chapter 2, verse, from verse 1, he says, do not love the world, and do not love the things of the world. And then he says there are three things in the world which people love. First one is lust of the flesh. The second one is lust of the eye. The third one is pride of life. He says these three things are you have to recognize first John chapter 2 verse 15, 16, and 17. And he says, these are the things in the world and do not compromise with them. As Lord Jesus Christ, he said, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, do not join in ungodly things. You are the temple of God. Because the Spirit of God dwells in you. The fourth condition Lord Jesus Christ gave, and that was in chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2, and verse 18, 19, and 20. He says, and unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write, These things say the Son of God, who hath his eye like unto the flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy work, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servant, to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idol. That means we are not to do things in the church which does not give glory to Lord Jesus Christ. The circumstances are in his hand. He can handle everything. But we are to be separate from all those, circum uh, those rituals which does not give the glory to Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 4 and verse 24, he says, God is a spirit, and we are to worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's what God wants us to do, that we do what word of God says. Everything what is in the world is a revelation of God. And then it says, Jesus, there was word and word was God. And then it says, the word became man. And Lord Jesus Christ is the Word. So when you see the Word of God, when you read it, think about Him. 
He is the word which you are reading. He is the word. You are touching him. You are talking to him. And he is in you. And that was interesting, you know, in the beginning was the word. Word was with God and word was God. And here we have word of God in our hand. Lord Jesus Christ. In a figurative way, Lord Jesus Christ, you are seeing him. This is what he is. The fifth condition is be watchful. Be watchful because he is coming soon. And how you are to be watchful, very first thing what you have to do, that you have to have a peace in your heart that I am doing what my Lord wants me to do. And Lord will give you peace in your heart that yes, I praise him. If there is no peace, remember, come back to him and ask him, Lord, lead me, guide me. He says, be watchful, chapter 3 and verse 1 and 2. Revelation chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis, write these things, said he that had the seven spirit of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Lord wants us to be watchful because he is coming soon. He has given his people authority to do what he has given us to do. The second thing is that he is coming soon and any time he will be here. The things what are happening around us. Matthew 24, 8, it says there will be famine, there will be pestilence, there will be war. Look what we are looking at. What is going around us. Is a pestilence covering the whole world. Lord is coming soon. We all are to be ready. And the people who are ready, only those are the ones they have accepted Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. They have made covenant with God and they have said, Lord, I accept you as my personal Savior. Lord Jesus Christ will come and they will be with him. And that's what we are to be. Remember, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my race. Now there is the crown of righteousness sitting there for me. Not only for me, but for all those who are Lord Jesus Christ people. Beloved, time is coming that we all are going to meet him and he can come anytime. There is no time that we can say, oh, he is coming on a certain day. No. He said, only Father knows. He can come in when Father wants him to come. So we are to be ready. The sixth condition is 
chapter 3 and verse 8 I know thy works behold I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it for thou has a little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name he says I have opened door for you and I want you to go out preach the gospel give the gospel out he said nobody can close that door and this is what another thing we are to do ask the Lord Lord where you want me to go who you want me to speak and it is the Lord who will provide I was just uh, today this morning I went somewhere and uh, it was his provision one lady she started talking and she was like atheist I gave her the gospel gave her the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ so we are to be ready door is open for you and we are to speak of Lord Jesus Christ the seventh condition is have a strong faith and live in faith chapter 3 Revelation chapter 3 and verse 18 I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment and thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thy eye with eye salve that thou mayest see here Lord Jesus Christ is saying buy from me gold tried in the fire first Peter chapter 1 verse 7 he says your faith is a gold tried in the fire we are to get the faith from Lord Jesus Christ he will give you faith will never fail and he says I give you the raiment white raiment he give you the righteousness it is the Lord Jesus Christ righteousness is our righteousness we cannot depend on our own righteousness it is the Lord who has made us righteous through his blood through his uh, resurrection and we believe in Lord Jesus Christ and you are righteous before God then he says by of me I shall I saw is that open your eyes to understand what word of God said and that's what I saw is that uh, um, that is in the uh, Psalm 119 and verse 18 open my eyes so I can see the wonders of your law it is the Lord who opens your eyes and he will give you the wisdom Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 15 through 18 and he says Lord Jesus Christ said one time Matthew 13 16 blessed are your eyes who see them and that's why beloved Lord Jesus Christ he said in Re Revelation chapter 2 verse 7 
To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life. Chapter 2 and verse 11. He said, He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Chapter 2 and verse 17. He said, He that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him white stone, and in the stone of new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth. Lord Jesus Christ, he wants you to overcome. Overcomer, because our Lord, he overcame. He overcame the devil. He overcame the death. He overcame the world. He overcame all the powers. And he has a control. Chapter 2, verse 26, he said, He that overcometh and keep my words unto the end to him will I give power over the nation. Chapter 3, verse 5, he said, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Chapter 3, verse 12, he says, He that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Beloved, Lord Jesus Christ has great plan for your life. All we have to stand with him, wait for him, be careful, be watchful. One day we are going to share his blessing, his inheritance, because you are co-inheritant of Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter 3 verse 21 he says, to he, to him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne. That is a great, a joyful time. You are going to sit at the throne of Lord Jesus Christ with him. What a blessing. Lord, we bless you and give you great courage to go through it, doesn't matter what circumstances come around you. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, our great Almighty God, we come to thee in the holy, precious, almighty, everlasting name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we praise thee, we adore thee, Lord, we bless thee, we worship thee for this message. Father, thy almighty hand be with us, Lord, we pray for our country. Thy almighty hand be upon this country, Lord. Forgive our people. And Father, bring many sons and daughters in your kingdom. Father, we pray for the believers throughout the world. And Father, other nations. Father, have mercy on the nations. Have mercy on the countries. And Father, protect them, deliver them from this virus, and thy almighty hand be with them, Lord. Father, we commit them into thy almighty hand. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.